Welcome back. This is part two of my OBS tutorial. In part one, I showed you how to set up this arrangement for switching between full face and visual aids with your face in the corner. But we'd only got as far as having a single static image, which is obviously not very useful. Now, there are several ways you can address this. OBS itself has an image slideshow source type. I don't find that particularly useful. I'm gonna show you an approach which is a lot more powerful and which I find more convenient. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna open my slideshow in PowerPoint, running in a window in another area of the screen, and make OBS duplicate it in this area. Now, I have the luxury of a 4K resolution monitor here. If you've only got a tiny monitor, this will be more fiddly, but it is doable. And my setup is portrait orientation. If you're on a laptop or you prefer landscape orientation, then find an arrangement of windows that works for you. So to do this, I need to create a kind of source called Display Capture. It needs a name. I'm going to call it Main Screen Capture. And you will see that like an idiot, it's brought in the whole of the screen by default, giving you a nice bit of Drosta effect. But as you've probably guessed, we're going to resize and crop it. So when I bring my PowerPoint window in, I'll just change the view there so that you can see that the duplication is live and immediate. So I need to crop it, and this took me a while to work out. When an image is really big, you have to shrink it before you can even access the cropping handles. There we go. So I'm gonna crop out everything that I don't need. For this example, I just want the slide itself, not the slide sorted down the left-hand side, so let's crop that right out. There we go, and now we simply remove the static image and fit the screen capture in its place. So we've now reproduced the view with the important difference that you can now control the slideshow using the mouse or keyboard or whatever you like. And not only that, you can bring anything you like into the display area. So for instance, um, our old friend, the irrelevant fish tank, uh, pop that in there and, uh, and set it going. It takes a little bit of arranging so that it fills the whole space, but you get used to that with practice. Uh, you can of course start and stop it at will. Another thing that I often find useful is you can bring in uh, web pages uh, like so. It's a quick and easy way of pointing people to backup sources. You can use the same approach to talk through how to use particular software. The sky's the limit, basically. Now, an important bit of housekeeping, what we've just made here with the two scenes, which we can switch between, that's called a scene collection, not unreasonably. And you can see here, it's the one with the tick check mark there. So it's currently uh, hasn't given it a title. It doesn't by default. So we should probably call it something. I'm gonna call it teaching view. And if you don't get around to doing that, if you close OBS down, when you open it up again, your existing scene collection will or should be uh, waiting for you. But it is good practice to save them, give them particular names so that you can set up a different group of scenes if you are trying to do something different. So here's one I prepared earlier. Like the other one, this contains two scenes. You can have as many as you like and you can uh, switch between them easily enough. Let's get rid of that now, it's scaring me. I find this a much quicker and easier way of working than a lot of systems which require you to do all kinds of fiddly, oh, you want to show this window to this thing, messing around with them, pressing stuff. You can do a lot of stuff quickly, just dragging things in. It looks a bit rough and ready, um, but that's fine uh, in, in presentation terms. In fact, if anything, it slightly um, adds the interest value, uh, particularly when you mess it up, which I do on a fairly regular basis. If you want fine control, the ideal way to prepare a presentation is to do everything in advance, record all the fluffs, go for second takes or third takes or whatever, and then edit it down into one.
one lovely, harmonious, coherent whole. That does take a very long time, as you'll know if you've spent any time playing about with editing software. Doing it this way can be a lot quicker and easier. You just run through it all once and then you've got something which is, it won't quite be polished, but it will at least be decent and usable and you've saved yourself a lot of time. Now, having worked out all these presentation techniques, we need to say something about how to actually record this stuff. The quickest and easiest way is using the record function in OBS itself. You'll see there is a start recording button over here. This wasn't in the original versions of OBS. It was designed for live streaming. So there are ways you can set it up to interact with Twitch or various other platforms. That's not what this video is about. Learning how to record. This is the kind of thing, by the way, there's a lot of support material about online. So if you dig around, do the obvious web searches, you will find both uh, text tutorials and in fact quite a lot of videos, but it's pretty straightforward. You do need to know where your recorded video is going to. That's um, if you go into settings and then output and then recording, you will see I've got mine set to go straight to my desktop here because I'm untidy, but you can put it uh, anywhere you like. And then to start recording, you press the start recording button, you'll see it has now started. If I stop it, it has now generated a new file, thus. What you can also do is pause the recording. So this is where I drink all the lovely coffee. And then unpause it and carry on like this. And then if I show you that recording, you will perceive that there is a slight jump. There it was, um, but no coffee in sight. And I am, of course, jumping about all over the place. With these recordings, that can be distracting if there's too much change between shots, but most of the time, nobody really minds. And similarly, if you need to go away from the recording and come back to it later, nobody's expecting Hollywood levels of continuity. Just make sure there are no changes that are so noticeable they distract the audience from what you're saying. One slight flaw in the inbuilt OBS recording system, which I hope they will uh, deal with in a future version, is that it's a little bit hard to tell when you're actually paused. So uh, if I press the pause button, okay, that's paused. See the background to the pause button is a slightly lighter shade of grey and that's unpaused. Paused, unpaused. So that's not ideal if you're not paying very close attention uh, to what's going on. Uh, it's easy to pause or unpause by mistake. There are alternatives. You can use OBS to control the scenes and then do the recording using screen capture software. That's probably a topic for another video. It adds a level of complexity, but there are various systems available, some of which are free, some of which are very sophisticated. There are things you have to watch out for. When I was doing the, uh, the big portrait view earlier on, the display was a bit laggy and glitchy, and that problem was down to the particular screen capture software I was using using, which is nonetheless absolutely fine when you're doing a, a slightly smaller view like this one. So you have to play around with the various alternatives and see what works. But I want to end by showing you Virtual Cam, the Virtual Cam plugin or additional element for OBS, which is very powerful indeed. As with any plugin, it's not part of the standard installation. You have to add it separately. If you look at the website, search on virtual cam, you will find this dire warning here that we've got to use this version. So I'll just click that. And if you click go to download, it should give you a link to download a straightforward installer. Now, when you go into the tools menu, you will see that there is a virtual cam option. And so this auto start option is I think turned off by default. You will probably want to turn it on, um, I do. That means that anytime you open OBS, it will automatically set virtual cam running. And what that means is that whatever OBS is showing is registered on your computer as being an extra webcam, a virtual webcam, one that doesn't really exist. So your computer, as far as anything can tell, anything that can talk to your computer, you've got two webcams. Your real one, the one that always shows this, just what's in front of it, and the virtual one, which shows the OBS output. So at the moment it's showing this, but if I press my magic hotkey, then it starts showing this instead. 
Now, this is tremendously exciting because look what happens when I join a Zoom meeting. I've actually brought in the, uh, this is just a, uh, it's the standard Zoom test call uh, here, just so you can see it. Um, so as you can see, there is nothing at the moment but a blank sea of gray because OBS has grabbed the webcam and it won't give it to Zoom. And indeed, if I press join with video, I get the, uh, the little PASAG message at the top of the screen saying cannot start video, failed to start the video camera, and by default it just makes it an audio only call. But watch what happens if I press this little arrow next to start video. You can see it's giving me the choice of the two cameras it thinks it's got. The real webcam, the physical webcam which it can't control, and OBS camera, which it can. And when I press that, you will see that it is sending my OBS output as my camera output, including the webcam view and also everything else. So I can switch around, um, I can appear as normally as any Zoom user, and I can go into this. And uh, of course, Zoom itself has facilities for all these things. You can share your screen and so forth. Um, but if you find this approach more convenient, you can have your head on one side. And if you want to show people stuff, you can just drag that stuff into the display area to your heart's content. The same will apply to any video conferencing system which uses your webcam. And if you're using one of the ones where you irritatingly, you can't see your own face when somebody else is talking or when you're sharing documents, that's no problem if you wanna be able to keep an eye on what your face is doing, whether your camera's pointing the right way, because you can just leave OBS set up uh, as a small window in one corner of the screen serving as a monitor. The sky really is the limit as to what you can do with this. I will leave you to come up with your own ideas. Now, I just wanna show you one last thing, which is how to use OBS with a green screen. Now, green screens are hard work and probably deserve a video in their own right, but I will just show you the principle. Um, so we deal with this again using a filter, which we put on the webcam. So uh, filters and then you want an effect filter and it's the chroma key variety, which you may know as one of the many names of green or blue screen technology. So it has a set of defaults which try to key the screen out as far as possible. To be honest, messing about with these defaults rarely does you very much good. If the keying is not effective, then I'm afraid you are going to have to sort out your lighting. This one's not great. It's a bit uneven, as you can see, and I've got a green halo like nobody's business, but it'll do to show you. And so my green background is now transparent. Uh, conveniently, we've still got the beige left in there. So I will pop that in and you can see immediately it's not quite working uh, down in the corner. Solid colors are quite unforgiving for green screen. If I bring in something patterned like this image of my actual work bookshelves here, you can see it's very much not as bad. Now the potential serious use of this comes with the head in corner view, where if I get rid of the frame, I can now pop myself down in the corner. And in a situation where you really want to make use of all the available screen space, you can simply stick yourself unobtrusively down in the corner like that. And if you're the kind of person who's irritated that your computer's not quite powerful enough to be able to do background videos in Zoom, you'll be pleased to learn that you can simply have a background running uh, on the OBS virtual webcam and send it to your Zoom call or indeed pretty much whatever you like. So I hope that's given you some sense of the possibilities. OBS is not the only way of doing these things um, or even the commonest way. It is for me one of the quickest and easiest ways that I've yet found. And I'm hoping to be developing more of these videos. So if you've got any requests or any questions, then uh, let me know. Bye for now.